Hey guys, how are you going? So the other day, I reviewed a hundred dollar violin. I'm gonna buy a violin. And uh, I was pretty brutal. It's not making a sound. I have to say, but uh, the reason I was brutal is really because I am passionate about string players and string players actually getting really far with their instrument and, and having the best chance of learning. And this instrument just wouldn't have helped with that. And there's a lot of instruments, I, you know, I do actually get a lot of people coming in with instruments in that kind of condition. It's not working. Uh, that, that are just terrible like they're, they're new but they're basically unplayable I call them VSO violin shaped object so here it is now um, I reviewed it already but now I have a problem what am I gonna do with this instrument so my original thought was you know I recently did a video with two set where we put 27 kilos on a top plate and the instrument held. So I was considering putting 27 kilos, that's over 50 pounds, on top of this instrument. But I thought rather than placing it on top, I could maybe drop it from a meter or three foot. But, uh, you know, that's very destructive. And, uh, and you know, if I get to, maybe if I get to 100,000 followers, if that's the case and everyone's in, I will happily drop 50 pounds or 27 kilos from one meter and we can see what happens to this VSO. But I thought in the meantime, maybe I'm going to try to actually make it workable. So I'm going to, I'm going to do all the setting up that it would take and I'll talk you through all the things that it would need, that it would take to get it working. So the other day I said it would take approximately a uh, 400 Australian dollars to get there but uh, you know I'd, I'd, I'm very interested to see how that goes there's a lot of measurements that aren't right so there's a lot of things that I would have to like tweak and fix to get it working but I'm very curious how it would sound if it was set up with a good quality bridge a good quality sound post good quality strings and we spend that $400 I mean we would quadruple the quintuple is that a word? The value. So the value would go up from, well, the cost at least would go up from $100 to $500. That would be the cost. I cannot guarantee that it will actually have the value of $500, but I'll do my best. So here we go. I'm going to take this to the workshop and I'm going to start working on it. Here it is, VSO, Violin shaped, shaped Object. Let's see if we can make it actually playable and sound a little bit better. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strings off and then I'm going to play in the fingerboard to give it the right shape. Now here I'm not going to, you're not going to watch in on everything I do. Uh, I'm just going to show you some of the highlights. Uh, now the strings, the only thing these strings are good for is the bin. So that's where I'm going to put them and also the bridge is also good for the bin. Uh, the timber is quite often way too soft so it kind of has a spongy feel. And when the timber, when they use spongy timber on a bridge, it'll actually absorb the, um, the vibration rather than pass them on to the top plate. The bridge I'll be using is a Despio. Um, I handpick these, so I like to make sure that they're all good quality. So let's take uh, this off, uh, very important, throwing bridge and strings into the bin. Okay, so now I'm going to check the fingerboard. Now the fingerboard has a very unusual curve to it. Uh, it's sort of okay. It's a little bit... Uh, so it's a bit pointy, so the, the curve isn't quite right. So it's a bit too curved just around the middle here. And so it's really hollow on the G and the E. 
but it's uh, it's a bit pointy in the middle here. So I'm just going to play in it like I would any other good instrument. The, the fun thing, fun fact and fun thing that's going to happen here is because that's not a real ebony fingerboard, you're going to see some white timber appear as I play in it. So first of all, I need to take the nut off. Wow, this. Yeah, they glued that down pretty solidly. So this is supposed to just very easily split off so that the fingerboard can be planed. But that is not happening. <laughs> it's just not coming off. I just hope I don't destroy it because I really don't fancy making another nut. <laughs> <laughs> some stuff's kind of disintegrating up the top here and I'm still not there now I don't know what kind of glue they used but yay something came off holy moly that that wasn't pretty okay here it is it's the nut yeah, the slightly sad thing is that this horrible varnish on here is probably gonna make my plane the, the blades on my plane a little bit blunt and uh, I never like that when that happens, but let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Oh, lovely. Now, while we're waiting for that to dry, oh God, <coughs> that's probably toxic dust from artificial varnish. Now, I'm going to fit the pegs next. So while we're waiting for the uh, timber on the uh, fingerboard to dry, so this is called a reamer. So I'm going to refit the pegs. That job usually costs around $40 to do. Okay, so that's sanding the last peg. And then I better put peg paste on because these little guys weren't working at all very well before. So I'm going to put some peg paste on, make sure they work smoothly. Okay, last one. There we go. And they're moving fairly smoothly. While I'm here, I will re-drill these peg holes. Okay, so I've done the last bit of wetting the fingerboard. Now there's a lot of uh, dust on here and I'm just going to wipe it off because it's horrible. It actually smells a bit of this varnish as well, like this, this artificial varnish that's on there. And it's really gross. Not, not a fan. Like I said, I'm going to fit a Despio bridge here. I'm not going to let you watch in on the entire thing process because it takes a while. And I've done other videos where I've shown how to do it. There we go. Okay, so it's my rough fit done. The other thing I'm going to work out, I just want to know the actual fingerboard action. So fingerboard action, the measurement is actually taken where the bridge goes. So if you follow the fingerboard along to where the bridge is, and then where the bridge is, you put a ruler, and it should be 27 and Believe it or not, on this violin it is actually 27.2 like millimeters, so it's very close. I've come a lot of across a lot of these instruments where the fingerboard action has been totally out. And I'm going to mark the string height now, and this is hugely important. That was so wrong on that original bridge, so it's just very important that it's right. It just makes playing so much easier for the player. So there we go, I've marked that in, and uh, I will cut the curvature, then I'll keep, there's a fair bit of cutting I do on, the, on each bridge, and that's all about sound optimization. So the bridge, the role of the bridge is to transfer the vibrations from the strings onto the top plate. So this is really, it's a really important job. And the job, you know, my job is to make that as easy as possible. Uh, so I have a set of thicknesses and uh, um, thicknesses and a, an exact shape that I use that I have found. And we've done a lot of research here, and this shape tends to um, get 
the sound waves onto the top plate in the best possible way. Okay, so I've finished cutting the bridge, I've sanded it, like uh, finished cutting everything, I've done the string spacing which is very important. I want to get that exactly right. I use 34 millimeters for the, the G to E string spacing. So from from here to there is 34 millimeters. And uh, so I'm just gonna put some oil on the bridge and then I will put my stamp on there, my stamp of approval. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to put the stamp of approval on the entire instrument, but I most certainly will on the bridge. And of course, I will put some graphite into the string grooves. Graphite is just a very fancy way of saying pencil. And there we go, beautifully done. So we've got a nice bridge, $120. We've done most of the fingerboard, $170, and I've done the pegs, $40. So what are we up to? Uh, 210 for the bridge, 120, 300 and so we've spent $330. I still haven't done this sound post. I've also put some grease on here and I should really charge for that, but just for the purpose of this exercise, I won't do it. But we'll be putting these on, uh, Perestro Tonica strings, $50 in Australia, that's Australian dollars. That'll bring us up to $380 and we haven't done the sound post. So a new sound post, which I'll probably have to do for a cheap violin, will be around $60. So I'm going to do that now. I'll get the original sound post out and I'll put the new sound post in. Oh, what I'll do first, just for fun, I will color the fingerboard nice and black. I'll show you how I get the sound post out in the first place. Oh my god, that is so tight in there. No wonder it sounded terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was nasty. There's so many things to the sound post. And one is the... Uh, one is how firmly the sound post sits in the instrument and the other one, but it's also the quality of the sound post and then the exact position of the sound post. Uh, I've got to get the finger spacing right. You'll remember it was about 13 and a half millimeters. So I will try and get the finger spacing to 16 millimeters. But I do have to say that this entire nut is just, it's made of shocking materials. It doesn't fit properly. I don't know what they glued it down with, but it was pretty solid. So I hope we don't break strings courtesy of this nut because that would put up the cost again. Okay, I've just done this sp uh, string spacing on the nut. And what's really important here is actually getting the string height right as well. Uh, because it's only a fraction of a millimeter. And I'm pretty much ready to put on the strings. Now I've put some clear varnish on the fingerboard and as you can see the black didn't stay on quite as much as I would have liked it to. But I'm not too worried about that because the, whether it's black or white it's not actually going to affect the sound very much. All right, so time to put on strings. Okay, here we go. Also, I wind the string on very carefully that it um, that it's right up against the peg box. But if you want to see how to wind on a string, I have done an awesome video on how you do that, and you don't I don't need to spend time explaining that now. Now I haven't done anything to that original bow and I'm not going to touch it like that's that's not going to be part of this exercise. I'm just very curious to hear what we can do to improve the sound of this instrument. I'm kind of excited to hear the instrument being played. Obviously the strings will go out of tune a bit too fast. 
uh, which is always a bit frustrating at first, but you know, I, I'm just really keen to, to see what it sounds like in comparison. Okay, here we go. The neck still feels funny, so uh, I would actually want to do a little bit of work on the neck. But I, I want to hear the sound of this instrument, so I'm just so curious. Okay, here we go. It's not as good as the other instrument uh, that I had. has a much better sound. Now it's not, the sound isn't quite as good as the other instrument that I played to me. Um, the other one has a bit more clarity as well as it, it won't break. So this one you can hear that it sometimes breaks. So. <laughs> See so hear that cracking noise? That means the sound is kind of breaking a little bit and that's just not a, a strength but generally the sound is so much better but at what cost i mean literally i have put so i put on a plane the fingerboard which was 170 dollars i um did the pegs so I refitted the pegs for forty dollars and did a new um, sound post for sixty dollars. So together that's two hundred and seventy dollars. I put on a new bridge, which is one hundred and twenty dollars. So that makes it three hundred and ninety dollars. And I put on a fifty dollar set of strings. Now that comes out to four hundred and forty dollars of work that I've done on this instrument. And that doesn't even count, you know, I had to, like, I had to adjust the fine tuners because they weren't quite right. Also, I've done nothing to the bow. But, um, but you know, it's made the instrument passable. So it's, a, uh, you know, it's gone from a VSO to being something that actually sounds like a violin, which is great. And... And, you know, I, I was very careful. I, I obviously, I got the ex exact string spacing of 16 millimeters and equal string spacing, which is really important before it wasn't even equal. Uh, I've got the bridge spacing, string spacing at 34 millimeters. And again, I've done them equally. I've also got the string heights right. So I was very careful to do the string heights. And you know, it's quite amazing, but this instrument actually has the right fingerboard action, which is really unusual for these beginner instruments. They're a bit of a random mixed bag. So sometimes they're too high, sometimes they're too low. The sounds are random. You can get a good sounding one and not so good sounding one. But, you know, we've actually got an instrument that sounds okay, that's easy enough to play, and that would be okay for a beginner. But we've taken, we've spent $100 on the instrument, and then $440, that's four times the cost, more than four times the cost of the instrument to actually improve it and to get it into a playable condition. And that, to me, is spending too much. You know, do yourself a favor, if you can afford it, you know, don't go for those $100 beginner instruments. Spend five, uh, 500 to 1000 Australian dollars. That's about 350 to 700 US dollars. And buy an instrument that's, that's a nice instrument with 
ebony parts that's been set up by a luthier and a luthier who cares about beginners because you know as a beginner you're important you know you have just started playing one of the most beautiful instruments on this planet and just remember that every soloist was once a beginner and it was because someone took the time to show them and and then of course they had to take the initiative but that's why they're such good players everyone was a beginner once you know and i've worked with people who've started at all ages so i've worked with beginners starting at age two and i've worked with beginners in their 70s and all of them even players in the 70s have been able to actually get to a decent like either intermediate or higher level which is really amazing so don't be discouraged it's never too late you know the important thing is training your muscle memory and then just making music anyway you know i hope this was helpful if you like what i do you know subscribe to my videos that way you find and click the little bell just next to it because that way you find out every time I post a new video you'll be the first and also I love your comments I really appreciate it I love the feedback and your suggestions that that kind of makes me feel special you know we're, we're a special community of string players and my goal is to support string players with knowledge you know I've done this for 35 years and so I know violins and I know stringed instruments really well and it's great for you to have some of that knowledge it actually helps you be a better player so if you like my video click like but if you don't like it let me know why I do appreciate it anyway it's always nice talking see you next time bye